but I'll get us started off with a, uh, why don't we get started off with a uh, cool paddock? Yeah, definitely. So uh here we have a 5135 rose, and not just your typical 5135 rose. This is a limited edition to 100 pieces for the Russian market, 5135. And what makes this watch so special is the fact that it has a black dial. The watch was actually never produced with a black dial except for this edition. And the watch, which we have on the table here, came with specialized custom cufflinks also uh, that came as part of a set. So black cufflinks with the Calatrava cross emblazoned on the front with the black dial. It's an awesome watch. I actually think that the 5135, uh, while not such a huge commercial success when it was launched or when it was being produced, has since come back, you know, to being in much greater demand given that it's, you know, it's, it's a larger watch. And, uh, you know, the rose against the black is absolutely beautiful. It probably should have been made this way back when they were making the watch and uh, overall is a really cool piece. Yeah, every once in a while, Patek will do something really cool for the Russian market. They actually made a white gold, uh, full blue dial 5960 before the regular production yeah. blue dial 5960 came out, and that Moscow edition, it's usually the Moscow boutique, remains a very yeah. highly sought piece. I'll also say this, uh, the 5020 wasn't cool once either because it was rather oddly shaped. Get ahead of the market with stuff like this, this is an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, this is an example of a watch. We've actually never seen one. And we had the opportunity to, to purchase it, and you know, I, I said like this is the kind of watch that I think there's a there's still a void in the market in the sense that a lot of consumers don't even know it exists, and you know, it's a good opportunity to buy a truly limited edition watch from Patek Philippe that happens to be one of their most iconic complications at actually a reasonable price point as it stands relative to some of the other. Uh, what the limited editions are doing. And it's a great watch. You know, it's it's a black dial annual calendar. It's a beautiful piece. It's not like it's an ugly edition. No. You know, it happens to be, you know, black dials gorgeous. with rose gold. And it even comes with documentation punchy. saying it's a limited edition. You know, I'm a I'm a big fan of the watch. I'll say this regional editions and micro editions are like the great next frontier of collectible watches. There have been so many regional boutique, special dealer, special occasion editions by great brands. Especially Sincere Watch in the Hourglass out of mm -hmm. East Asia, Chrono Passion and Dubail out of Paris, Siddiqui and Sons. There's been so much cool stuff that's never like been internationally known. Someday, I think there's a great book to be written about regional editions. Yeah. I don't know if I'll write it, but that's a wonderful topic to tackle. Yeah, and uh, and to answer Hein Rising's question, yes, the cufflinks actually do come with the watch. And guys, feel free. You know, please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about the watches that we're showing you. Um, anything that comes to mind, anything that we can answer, that's what the show is all about. So, uh, moving right along, you know, yeah. all these watches come from, uh, you know, come from the vault and are things that are either just came in, coming in, or, uh, you know, are currently available. So, this particular watch right here is the Ulysse Norden Executive Turbion Skeleton. So... This, to me, is an example of everything that Yulise Snarden is doing right, right now. You know, beautifully executed watch, skeletonized dial, tourbillon, all under $40,000. And I just think that this watch sort of uh, exemplifies, you know, both the aesthetic of Yulise Snarden as well as uh, good value. And, you know, I'll let Tim go into a little bit more on the mechanics of the watch, and then we can, you know, discuss it further from there. Well, the first thing I love about this watch is that it works as a watch. You can see that the hands are easy to trace, and it's actually easier to read than something like a Movado Museum watch because you do have stylized Roman numerals and hour indices. You've also got a gorgeous and completely open tourbillon. The advantage of skeletonizing this dial isn't so much to make the watch look gossamer and evanescent. It is that, but it's also to open up many diagonal views of the tourbillon carriage and its silicon escapement. Now, one feature we should mention is that this is a manual wind watch of the most extraordinary variety. Seven day power reserve. It's actually a little bit more than seven days, 170 to 172 hours. And the watch is 45 millimeters, but in ceramic, ceramic bezel and titanium, the watch is light on the wrist. I need to do a wrist shot of this one because you need to see the 45 millimeter watch, the 43 to 45 millimeter watch, that's, a, that's the oversized range, but they don't all wear the same. The executive can be unwieldy in its precious metal iterations. This one's easy to wear on my 16 centimeter wrist. And again, you've actually got loomed hands. So this is a watch 
a rare tourbillon skeleton watch that's designed to be worn on a daily basis. And like Brian said, it has the look of Ulysse Nardin, and with the silicon escapement, it has the tech of Ulysse Nardin. Exactly. And you know what? You've got the titanium case ceramic bezel. I just think that it's a beautifully executed watch. It came in at the right price point. This is just as easily a watch that, it, that you know, you could see a brand coming and saying it's 65000 and it becomes a bit of a flop. But they didn't do that. It came in at, I want to say, 38000 retail, right. which was spot on. It was underpriced relative to pretty much all other tourbillons in the market from a comparative brand. And, you know, it actually was a commercial success. I would say between the Freak, which in every iteration from the Freak Vision to the Freak Out that just came out, the silicon technology that goes into that watch, not just not just in the escapement, which they've been doing for a while, but the constant force mechanism, the full drivetrain, it's stunning stuff. UN has really redefined itself over the last two model years. They're no longer just purveyors of giant yellow gold dive watches. They've become a little bit more sophisticated. I think there's a level of refinement that, you know, to be perfectly fair, was a couple of years in the work and dates mm -hmm. back to the Patrick Hoffman era, mm -hmm. but there's some great stuff that's come out the last two years at SIHH. This isn't even close to their least expensive tourbillon. Yeah. They have an enamel dial. That just came out. Yeah, for, for like 28 grand, yeah. and it's 100 meters water resistant. Yeah, so, you know, I think that the brand's moving in the right direction, and I think that you're going to see, uh, you know, I, I don't want to use like a boat reference with Ulysse Nard, and I th you know, but riding the ship, so to speak.